In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at how to make a kind of spray paint effect, so a model that gradually kind of changes colour over time. So to do that, I've made a uh, folder called spray paint. I'm going to right click and create a new material, or a spray paint 2. Then we'll double click on this. I well, might as well just drag it straight onto the asset we're going to be um, messing around with too. Um, so this drag my material into my monitor. So the way we're going to control this is basically use a black and white map, um, a, like a noise map, Perlin noise style map, and then we're going to um, mix between those two colours over time uh, using sequencer. So the first thing we're going to want to do is add a texture sample, and then we're going to create an add and a multiply. And in our texture sample, I'm just going to find a kind of noise map we can use. So should already have one here. So I've got quite a few kind of already existing here. We'll just use that one just because it's got a nice kind of contrast between black and white. So we're going to stick this into the add node and stick the add into the multiply. And then we're going to use a scalar parameter like so. So we're going to make two of those. So in fact, we'll probably get away with just making one. We might be able to just use that in both our A and our B. So if we just check what the, it does to the add, nothing there. And then what it did, did it do to the multiply? That turns it to black. So if we just put our minimum default value to one, we should see that multiply now go to white. And 0.5 is kind of in between. Um, so yeah, we can see that from zero is black, one is white, and 0.5 is in between. So we're going to animate between that zero and the one in order to, in order to create our kind of change in color over time. So I'll we'll hold down L and click to add a lerp into the scene. Let's just clean up these nodes a little bit. And we're going to drop this into our alpha tab. Then what we're going to do is just add two colors here. Now you don't necessarily have to use colors. You could all just use, um, depending on your asset, you could use different colored textures um, and so on. You don't have to use colors. I'm just using colors here for the sake of this example. So what you might have, you might have textured this in Substance Painter and then kind of output two versions of the texture, one with um, a different color to the other. And then you can just mix between those textures instead if you have that kind of setup. So what I'm going to do is just drop red and blue into here just to make it kind of really obvious how that's going to work. And um, that's all we should really kind of need for the base color. Um, what we could have here is our albedo like linked into this lerp and then our standard metallic kind of roughness and normal kind of slots in here. So let's just drag this onto our asset, it's already on there. And what we'll do is we'll jump into um, our sequencer. If you haven't got a sequencer in your scene, if you just go to um, right click, animation, level sequence, see that's there, we'll double click that. Now if we just do track, sorry one second. We just do track and we'll add this model to that. And then what we'll do is we'll put um, on our pod here, we go onto this track, we hit static mesh component, then we hit track there and we do element zero. Now that should have spray paint. So as long as you have um, scalar parameters set up in here, then they will be visible in your sequencer. So if we just wind this on to the end of the sequence, and then here we'll put one, and you should be able to just cycle through and see that change. And you can see as it gets part way through, it's using that noise map to, um, uh, it's using that noise map to help kind of define, it's not just a linear kind of fall off. You could do it as a linear kind of just going from one color to the other, but if you want some variety, you'll need to have like a, a noise map in there as well. That's a nice easy way to control the color.
So um, but what about if we wanted to control some of these other variables as well? Well, that's nice and simple. We can just add another lerp into our scene for metalness. And we'll add two constants. So I held L to add the, constant, um, the lerp and hold one to add the constants. And we'll just drag those into there and we'll set our top one to one. So based off this, I know that the first color we see is blue. Um, so that's going to be like the underlying metal. So maybe we'll change that to like a um, kind of gray kind of tint. Um, so that means I want that to be metal because um, then that's going to be painted. So we'll leave one in there to make it full metal and then zero in there to make it um, full non-metal. Then we should be able to drag our multiply into there. And we'll drag that straight into the time. Now, if we get a um, error here, that's basically why the reason why that's happening is because we're using a float free here, so RGB all together, um, and then it's going into a float one here. So there's several ways we could fix this. We could either just drop um, colors into there, but we should be able to just drag that into there. That should achieve the same result. So we can see now we've actually got a metallic surface on our model and as it gets sprayed it turns into a um, non-metal like a paint. Now we'll want to do this same control with um, roughness. We could use textures for the roughness of course but just for the sake of this demo I'm going to use um, a similar kind of lerp setup. So again just drag that into there and maybe we'll, we'll want to have the Roughness initially quite low for the metal, so it's a nice shiny metal, um, and then the roughness higher for when it gets turned into paint. So that's why I put 0.2 for a low roughness on the metal, and 0.6 a higher roughness for when it turns into paint. So we should see this become more shiny, and then as the paint comes on, it becomes more matte. Now, I just want to um, reiterate here that you don't have to use, like if you've got textures, just use textures in these slots instead of constants, and the same here. Okay, so maybe we'll do textures for the normal map. So again, we want to add another lerp, and this time, let's just find some, should have some random normal maps in this example project anyway. So again, we're doing the same thing. We're just linking one texture to A, one texture to B, and then selecting our multiply and dragging that into the alpha. And then all we need to do is find some normal maps. Hopefully you've got some anyway, but I'm literally just going to drop any old thing in here. I'm not particularly going for any kind of look. just want some kind of variety to it. Now I imagine when I drag that onto there, probably going to be insanely high normal bump. And that's just because it's kind of a tiny map being used on a um, on a kind of non-tiling UV. So let's just add some texture chords in here just to make this a bit more sensible. So I'm going to drop one there. In fact, we could probably get away with the same one for both. And the reason I put a texture chord in is because in here I can control the tiling. So I'm really just going to rub that up stupidly high and then just hit save. Okay, so it's a little bit more sensible. Obviously, there's not much sensible going on here because it's just a, an example anyway, but at least it doesn't look so ridiculously bumpy. So now you can see that gradually change over time. So let's just play that. And yeah, so that's kind of uh, kind of it, I guess. If we just pick him over there. And just hit play. You can see over time that kind of paint appears on the model. Now, obviously, this can be completely controlled via this texture here. So, like, you can try out some different textures in this slot too. And obviously, you will achieve kind of a different different results depending on the noise map in here. So, it's worth like messing around with with different noises just to see what you can achieve. Uh, the one thing I'd say about some of these noises that I've output, like they weren't specifically for this. So um, what they have is um, some of them are quite grey and have a lot of black areas. Rather, when it's better for this, if you have pure um, p 
pure white to pure black and in between um, just so you get that nice kind of fall off. Okay, so that's how to set up a um, kind of spray paint effect. Um, like I say, it's really important that you get this noise noise map right though. Uh, ideally, I'd, I'd have one a bit more kind of cloud-like for this demo, but I don't really have that in here. Uh, maybe we'll just drop that in just for the sake of it to see what see what that looks like. Really wanted to show you guys like what a difference the noise map can make. Okay, so you can see there it's obviously significantly different effect to what we kind of had before. Okay, so that's using um, um, sequencer and a um, kind of animated uh, noise map in order to kind of generate a spray paint like effect. Um, if you had a texture already for this, I don't know if I have the stuff in here, so let's have a quick look. Okay, so let's say we have our kind of default albedo. We could say drop that in there instead. Hit save. Obviously, you can see now it has the default texture on it, and obviously the color kind of changes over time. So um, I really go off on a tangent on this if I say add in another alert, drop him into alpha. In fact, no, we'll just leave that. Um, so yeah, all you need to do is if you have two different um, two different base colors, you can drop those in and just swap between those, and exactly the same with all your other um, textures as well. So let's just put him back into there. Get rid of that and hit save. In fact, what would work better here is if I drag that to there, drop that into there. So that we actually got our. So what's going to happen now is this will start as that metal, and then it will gradually be spray painted to the albedo, and then I would do exactly the same kind of on these other slots as well. So we have the pod normal map there. So I drop that into B. I'm just going to make sure that that is being interpreted as a normal map. So just to show you that here, um, so this wasn't being interpreted as a normal map, I could tell that just from the, the preview of it. So I've just come in here and I've just selected normal map there and just hit save. And then we'll need to Luckily, it tells you, you see where you got the error there, it normally tells you what kind of solution you need here. So all we need to do is just set that to be normal. And hit save. And now what will happen is we'll go from our tiling underlying metal to the normal map and the kind of color on top. And we could do that exact same process with our roughness and metallic as well if we wanted. So let's just swap him back out to that noise map that we started with, hit save, go into our viewport here, ignore our weird bubbles and our laser and all the other weird stuff we've got going on. And then we just hit play on that and we can see that kind of gradually turn into that. 